Good evening and welcome to Estuary TV News. I'm Hugh Riches. Tonight I'll be joined by John Games of Hope for Justice and Neil Stamp of the Salvation Army to discuss human trafficking and slavery. And Dan Kemp will be here with the sport. There has been a game this weekend. But first, it's over to James Dunn for the news headlines. Hello. In the headlines today, how health organisations will be attempting to tackle undiagnosed dementia this week. And hundreds of people put their best foot forward for a local festival. Dementia Awareness Week launched across the region. In North East Lincolnshire, 4,000 people are diagnosed with dementia, but many remain undiagnosed. A number of presentations and workshops are being held to help people learn about symptoms and how to deal with it. Locally, a number of organisations that are involved in health and social care are putting on events, so there'll be information at the events, there'll be professionals there that people can talk to to get further advice. There's also some specific activities that are designed to take people back into different eras because what we find with um, people living with dementia is sometimes a different era can make them feel more comfortable so it helps them remember those things. So there's different activities in different places with different organisations but the aim of all of them is to raise awareness and to, to help show people where they can get further information. To help, a 1950s room has been set up at the Freeman Street Resource Centre and former trawler skipper Dennis Avery has been giving net making demonstrations. My involvement is just to come along and whoever turns up at the older group and uh, probably invoke a few memories or show them a few, little bit of net mending or answer any questions they might ask. I mean, the probably majority of them will have been associated with the fishing industry at the age group they are now. A Grimsby woman has had to undergo minor surgery after being shot with a pellet gun as she walked home alone on Friday. She was walking along Silver Birch Place at around 5.30pm when she heard a noise and felt something hit her arm. The pellet became lodged and had to be surgically removed. Police are appealing for witnesses. The 15-year-old girl who died following a car crash in Scorby near Brigg last week has been named as Caitlin Emily Smith. She was airlifted to a hospital at, in Leeds after the collision on Monday last week, but she sadly died from her injuries on Thursday. A new community building has been opened on Grimsby's Freeman Street after a £1 million refurbishment. The building, which is now called The Warehouse, was in a bad state of repair before being turned around thanks to a number of grants, including more than half a million from the National Lottery. It has a gym, a dance studio, a bar and a performance area which it's hoped will give people of the deprived East Marsh Ward a community hub. It's a piece of the heritage of Freeman Street, but on the inside we've extended on all three floors um, and really, it's, it really has come a very long way. I've lived in Grimsby all of my life. Um, this area has always been underprivileged and this is a chance really to give back to the area. Um, people can come to this centre and access it and it's not like something that feels like it's from Grimsby. It's almost like you should be in Manchester or, or a large city. It's something, a, it's a little bit of a TARDIS and you walk in and everybody's very shocked. It's, it's really great. An oil company has announced plans to drill at an exploratory site near Louth. Egdon Resources hope to drill at Donnington on Bain and say it will be a conventional well and they have no plans either now or in the future to undertake the controversial process known as fracking. They're holding a consultation day at Donnington on Bain Village Hall tomorrow between 1.30 and 7.30 p.m. The site would replace another planned site near Biscothorpe after Egdon withdrew their temporary planning application because of objection from local people. Hull City Council have decided to use the Endeavour School site for training and adult education when it closes at the end of next academic year. The decision was taken to close the school because of falling roll numbers, but the council say now it can still be used for the good of the community. Sports facilities will also be available for other schools to use. Ramblers have taken the first steps in the 10th Lincolnshire Wolds Walking Festival. The month-long event will see 130 walks and bike rides taking place and the first began in North East Lincolnshire when Healing was chosen as the venue. Around a thousand people turned up to enjoy walks around the popular village as well as having a go at geocaching which is the first for the festival this year. The festival is fantastic in that it attracts loads of different people. People who can just do a, a short one mile walk around a town centre and want to learn about heritage. To people who think 20 miles is nothing and they like to fit in two 20 mile walks in a day. Um, but the great thing is that people just really like to take part. And they, they're phoning us up months in advance wanting to know the exact details of the event so they can plan it into their holidays. 
The event is one of the largest in the UK and this year sees Estuary TV's own rambler Emma Lingard conducting guided heritage walks. That's all from me, goodbye for now. Slavery, forced unpaid labour, the deprivation of liberty by violence. It seems a ghost from the ancient world, but it is still with us and in this country and in this region. I'm with Neil Stamp of the Booth Lifehouse, set up by the Salvation Army, and John Gaines of Hope for Justice. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming in. Slavery is a, uh, it seems astonishing in this day and age that there can still be slavery going on in the United Kingdom. How, how big a problem is it? Well, in 2012, uh, the national referral mechanism, which Neil can talk about uh, better than I can, but they had 1,200 referrals. So those were people who'd been rescued and referred to the national referral me mechanism, which is a government-based uh, facility uh, to capture and rehabilitate and uh, get back into normal living victims of trafficking. Uh, that's probably the tip of the iceberg. There are probably uh, five, six thousand people who are trafficked each year into the United Kingdom. Uh, who, are, who are these people, Neil? Who's, who falls victim to this? Um, three basic groups. Women for the sex trade, children for the sex trade, and men who are sold into slavery, um, often um, recruited through uh, employment agencies in their own co country so it looks like a genuine offer of employment in the UK so that they can send money back to their f uh, families so they leave home trek across the, the the world and then discover that they lose their passports um, and then they're forced to work on the land or in building or, or in whatever industry um, and, and how are they forced what what is the nature of the coercion that makes them work and means that they can't go home, that they're not free. Th there are two key ways. Uh, one is where they are kidnapped or sold by their parents uh, to traffickers who yeah. take them away yeah. to... The parents sell them? Yeah, 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 yeah sadly. Uh, so that's one way. And then uh, the second way is where possibly somebody will approach them who they loosely know with an offer of a job and say if you go to the United Kingdom, Italy, uh, Netherlands, Ukraine, uh, we can offer you this job at this rate of pay. And it looks very tempting uh, if in areas of high unemployment and deprivation. So you, Neil, you mentioned that they're, they're made these offers, these fraudulent offers in their own countries. Where, where are their own countries? Where are they coming from? Um, Eastern Europe, Africa, uh, India, um, virtually anywhere, even People in the UK have been trafficked from one part of the UK to another on the promise of work and then they've been kept. Um, last year I think it was that the Salvation Army uh, was involved with a police raid on a farm where they found 20 people who'd been uh, locked up in containers from the backs of lorries and they were kept there as slaves, let out to work on the land and then put back in there uh, overnight. Uh, who are the slave runners? Who are, who, who's committing this crime? Is it an organised, is it a sort of a mafia thing, an organised crime? Is it a, a local thing in, in, in home countries with connections in the UK? Who are the villains? It could be uh, organised groups uh, similar to the mafia where, where they've got together and they have a network across Europe uh, whereby they traffic people and uh, their destinations of work are, are all carefully planned or it could be an ad hoc group uh, who get together in the local community in this country and decide they're going to start trafficking and start journeying to the Eastern European countries or wherever and start it that way. Uh, but it's highly rewarding financially uh, for the traffickers and it's relatively, at this stage, low risk because it's under the radar uh, for a long time, uh, well, until last year really, uh, there was very little happening in terms of actual convictions of people who were trafficking, so it was very low risk. Last year saw a sea change and there are a number of high prof profile convictions across the country which have served to raise the profile of trafficking uh, to the public at large. 
there's a, a question about the work that they do, that they're made to do, that they're forced into. Uh, if that's going to be uh, agricultural or working in a factory, then presumably the legitimate industries in this country, the farmers or the, the factory owners, is, is there no way they're not, they're not aware that part of their workforce is enslaved? I think so, to, to a certain extent, um, particularly on the land, if you're a farmer and you're approached by um, somebody purporting to be an employment agency, giving them a very good deal, provided you don't ask too many questions about the backgrounds of the, the workers, etc., then there's a ready market. Um, that's changing due to the legislation, and um, now companies that indirectly employ slaves could face fines. So some of the bigger um, retail markets like Asda or Marks and Spencers or any any of those. I'm not just picking those those no. out, but um, if it if any of their suppliers are using slave labour and they haven't checked on it, then they could be liable uh, in the future. Uh, so there are there are steps to curb the traffic, but um, when it's out in the wilds or, or whatever, then it's very difficult to keep track of. There is work being done to combat this problem. Um, Hope for Justice, John, is your charity. Just yeah. t tell us, what, what does that do? Well, Hope for Justice was created in 2008 as a response uh, to by, by a gentleman called Ben Cooley, who was the chief executive, and he went to uh, an evening event in Manchester where somebody was talking about trafficking and the fact it was happening in the UK. And, and he, uh, sorry to hurry, but what, yeah. what, what actively can you do to, to, to alleviate the problem? It's, it's, mm. it's well, a, Neil. Hope for Justice has three main areas. Camp campaigning, yep. uh, raising awareness, yeah. raising funds, uh, and also uh, as part of the work wi wi within the hubs uh, around the country, actually going in, investigating uh, referrals and rescuing people. And if people are worried, think they suspect slavery, they should, they should come to people like you. Yeah, or come to the go to the yeah. Salvation Army uh, website uh, and key in trafficking and there's a, a, oh. a number in, in there that, yeah. that will get a referral through. Thank, well. thank, thank you, Neil. Thank you, John. I must, yeah. must yeah. stop yeah. you there. Thank okay. you both very much. Yeah. Thank you. Hull City Football Club lost the FA Cup final this weekend, as you might have noticed in various media. It's only a game. Dan Kemp takes an interest in these things. Where better place to start than with Hull City? On Saturday, they competed in their first FA Cup final, an occasion fans have been waiting for their 110-year history. The Tigers took a shock early lead against Arsenal, a side expected to run away with the match from the onset. Centre-half James Chester was the man to turn the ball into the net on just four minutes, and City fans thought they were dreaming four minutes later when Curtis Davis doubled the lead. However, the class of the big spending opposition took its toll, and a Santa Cazola free kick before the break and a Lauren Koscielny leveller with just 19 minutes to go meant the game went into extra time. Hull fought bravely to take the tag to a penalty shootout, blocking several attempts on their goal, but with just 11 minutes remaining on the referee's watch, Aaron Ramsey beat Alan McGregor to win the cup for Arsenal. Despite the result, the overriding feeling of pride meant it was a day that will never be forgotten by Tigers fans. At the Manchester Magic weekend, Hull KR beat Hull FC 38-24, and in cricket, Yorkshire lost out in their first 2020 blast game against Northamptonshire. In Lincolnshire, Grimsby beat Billingborough, Louth defeated Market Deeping, and Woodall Spa beat Bracebridge Heath. Wins were also recorded by Bourne, Lindham and Sleaford. In athletics, the Louth Athletics Club had a triumphant day at the County Track and Field Championships in Grantham on Saturday. It was a big day for the Stainton family as Natalie took gold in the under-17 javelin and an enormous throw of 25.15 metres and Mother Kerry took first place in the veteran women's 1,500 metres. Thank you. Back to Hugh. Thanks, Dan. That's all we have time for. If you have a story for us, please email news at estuary.tv or contact us via our Twitter or Facebook pages or pick up the phone and call 01472 315561. Until tomorrow, goodbye.